Thank you so much, Brother Kingsley. We thank God. Bless the name of the living God. Amen. To him alone be all the glory. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to share on the platform in the capacity of ministering. I just want to thank you all because it is such a blessing to be a part of the well. And I want to thank everybody who is present today. I want to thank all the pastors, Pastor Jones, my mommy, mommy Pauline, the doctors, the Mukongs, and every other, you know, brethren who is on. I bless God for us today. So before we proceed, let's just uh, acknowledge the presence. I know we've prayed, but I want to acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit in the ministration. Father, I thank you for this moment. I know you have a plan for this moment in our lives because your purpose for us is that no second will be wasted. So Lord, as I've been given this opportunity to serve as a vessel, I pray, oh God, and yield myself to you that only your perfect will will be done. I pray, oh God, that this container, Father, will be sanctified completely, that the message, the content will not be tarnished by the flesh in any way. Father, I pray, I lift up my hands in total surrender, and I say, Lord, I'm just a vessel, and I sit to hear from you as well as my brethren, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 So let's get our elements ready. And I would like us to turn to the scripture, Numbers 21, verse 8 and 9. Mama Mildred, maybe you will help me pulling up the scriptures. Numbers 21, 8 and 9. You know, the word of God tells us in 2 Timothy 3, 16 that his word is his breath. So I just pray that we'll pay attention to every word of God and let the power of that word do the work in us. I thank God for the opportunity that we've had on this uh, line to be ministered to on faith and on giving. So I believe we are coming now to, you know, implement that which we have learned. And so mm. that's how everything will be effective. I know Mama spoke of um, sincere faith, good faith, all the good stuff about faith. So now it's time for us to, you know, begin to apply. Mm -hmm. And I know Pastor Jones spoke on giving, which is seed. So I pray that we applied that by faith. It is the word of God. It is his breath. So mm -hmm. let's acknowledge that and apply. Mm -hmm. All want to live. His breath gave us life. So let's apply his word. Amen. 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 So our scripture is taken from Numbers 21, verse 8 and 9. I'm reading from the Amplified Classic. It says, And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent of bronze and set it on a pole. And everyone who is beaten, when he looks at it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it on the pole. And if a serpent had beaten any man, when he looked to the serpent of bronze attentively, expectantly with a steady and absorbing gaze he lived Amen. you know if you mm. look at john we'll keep that and we'll come back to it look at john 3 6 john 3 14 john chapter 3 we start from verse 14 all the way to 17 Hallelujah. I'm still Amen. reading the Amplified Classic. It says, And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert on a pole, so must, that is, so it is necessary that the Son of Man be lifted up on the cross. That's in reference to what we just read. In order that everyone who believes in him, who cleaves to him, who trusts in him and relies on him, may not perish but have eternal life and actually live forever. And verse 16 says, For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave up his only begotten son, the unique son of God, so that whoever believes in, trusts in, clings to, relies on, 
him shall not perish. He shall not come to destruction nor be lost, but have everlasting life. And mm. God did not send the son into the world in order to judge, to reject, to condemn, to pass sentence on the world, but that the world might find salvation and be made sound and safe through him. Amen. 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 So I like the scripture in Numbers 21, which gives us a description on how our attention to God should be. Numbers 21 verse 8. I will repeat it again while I expand sheet. You know, the children of Israel, when they sinned and were beaten by a snake in the desert, snakes in the desert. And they cried to God in repentance. God gave instruction to Moses, which is a type of Christ. You know, the serpent that was lifted on the pole, just like Jesus will later be crucified in the scripture. Now, for the people to be saved and healed from the penalty, the, 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 the pay, of their sin, the, the, you know, what was happening to them after they sinned against God was that they had to look up to that snake that had been lifted up on the pole. And this scripture tells us that you have to look attentively, expectantly with a steady and absorbing gaze, which means when your eyes are lifted up to Jesus, what he did for you, when you lift up your eyes to the cross and as we are about to break bread, that is the kind of attention we need to remember what he did for us, how he went through his body being broken, how his blood was shed for our redemption and he was lifted up on the cross. So when we take our eyes on that cross, that's how we have to remember attentively those things that he did for us. His body was broken to take away our sickness, our shame, our shortcoming, our brokenness, whatever it was that the enemy had plagued us with because of our sins. That's how Jesus' body was broken and he had to be lifted up on the cross so that we can look at that cross and live. You can look at Jesus who is lifted up, who went through it all in remembrance of what he did and live. Living, not just breathing on a daily basis or just existing and people think you're alive, but living in wholeness, your own body being made whole through his broken body. So today I want us to be attentive as we remember what he did for us and be expectant because he did it for our wholeness. He did it for our healing. He did it to, to, you know, to, to, to revive that which was dead in us so that we could live again. And they say, look steadily with an absorbing gaze, which means you have to soak it. It's not just for the moment. It's not just you taking the bread and the wine now and then you forget when that, you know, that part is done. No, but it's about absorbing. Let it stay in you. Let it, let it remind you as you go during the day in your conversation, in your encounters, in your actions, Remember the broken body of Christ. And now I will read from Luke 22, verse 14, before we, we proceed please. Luke 22, 14. Luke chapter 22, verse 14 to 20 says, and when the hour came, I just want us to take our elements now and get them ready, please. And when the hour came, Jesus reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly and intensely, I like this, that's why I chose this chapter from, to read from Luke. Jesus earnestly and intensely desired to eat the Passover meal with his disciples. So it was intentional. It just didn't happen haphazardly. 
And it was all for a purpose to foretell them what was going to come and the importance of what that would be, because he says we should do it in remembrance. And he says, and he said to them, I have earnestly and intensely desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I told you I shall eat it no more until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he said, take this and divide and distribute it among themselves. For I say to you that from now on, I shall not drink of this fruit of the vine at all until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in like manner, he took the cup after supper, saying this cup, is the New Testament or covenant ratified that is signed. He used his blood to sign this covenant in my blood, which is shed, poured out for you. Amen. 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 I want us to take the bread in remembrance of what he said and in obedience, because he said we should do it as often in remembrance of him. Oh. I have a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. And this message unto thee I bring. I say, you can be my brother live. Look to Jesus, now I live. Recorded in his word. Hallelujah. You only have to look and live. Father, thank you. Lord, we know your body was broken for us. Every situation in our lives, those that we know, those that we don't know, those that are still to be discovered, mm. that broken. Father, mm. you already bore it upon yourself just so that we may be made whole. Mm. Lord, we thank you for making our penalty disappear and we don't have to pay the price anymore. We thank you and we give you all the glory, Lord. Whether as we have done this in remembrance of you, O oh God. Let your word, which is spirit and life, quicken our bodies and let the enemy know that this is a public declaration of what we know and who we know we are today and that we owe him nothing because you paid the price. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. I want us to lift up the Jews and give thanks to the Father. Lord, we thank you. Even though I hold this in my hand as Jews, Father, I pray that you will breathe upon it. And I know that I'm reviving myself in the blood of Jesus. Mm. I thank you for that wish you did for us, O oh God. That every single part of our lives that was stolen was redeemed. Mm. Earth was redeemed for us. Our relationship with our father was restored. And today we can call our God, Abba Father. Mm. Because you paid the price. You did not cause us to be, you know, the ones to labor in this covenant. We did not shed our own blood. But you did all the hard work. Your blood was shed. And we are benefiting from that. And we give you thanks, O oh God, even as we take this in remembrance. I will say, Father, as we are in the presence of your presence this moment, let this blood speak on our behalf. Let this blood that speaks only better things speak on our behalf. In Jesus' name we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen.
go ahead and take it. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So I Hallelujah. thank you so much for our people of God who had gone ahead to, you know, make the grounds easy for me. Amen. Thank you so much for, you know, teaching us on faith. And now I know it's, it's now it's a smooth ground for me to be able to just, you know, just go easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thank uh, Pastor Jones. I thank Prophetess Vivian who taught extensively on giving. And you know, there is no way we can harvest without sowing. So we, we at, I, I am glad with the way, you know, it was set up. It was chronological. So we can, you know, like just slide from one thing to the other with understanding. And I bless God for this platform because it's a platform where you, you, you get to experience what people have understood or where they stand. So it's easy to minister. And as I would say before I start, yeah. I'm not an orator, so you have to be very you know, intentional and uh, open your ears well to pick what God is saying, to pick it out. Because if, if you pay your attention on my, my style of talking or something, you may miss it. Yeah. But I tell you that, you know, I'm just availing myself for the Holy Spirit. So he has a lot. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So today our topic of, I would say, discussion, because I know that this is a platform that's open for us to share, and you know, we always get feedback, is um, this is our season of harvest. We have sown, so now we are entering into the harvest. I may touch sowing here and there, but our focus will be on the harvest. Mm -hmm. So as defined, mm -hmm. we all know that harvest is the process of gathering a ripe crop. When I saw this, it really made me, you know, I, I was excited when I, when I saw this, you know, this particular phrase, gathering a ripe crop. Mm -hmm. Crop, let's take note of that. Harvest is not just harvesting. You don't go to harvest premature. I thank God that the dictionary you know, defined it and made sure that they included ripe crop to it from the fields. And this is a time where you have intensive labor. So it's not just that when you go to harvest, it's just joy, joy, joy. You will just go and stand and it fills your basket. No, you work. So we have to have that in mind as well. We have sown... So we have to know that to harvest, you still work, but the truth is you end up smiling. Amen. Amen. So when God talks about harvest, let's realize that when he provides for us, harvest is provision from God. So when we harvest, it's twofolded for us and for others. So never you look at your harvest as yours. But one good thing is that when you have the mindset that you are a source for others, you never lack. It's like a pipe that provides water to a farm. You know, it's never dry. It's always wet. But, you know, the destination is not the pipe. The pipe is a source, but the pipe benefits. So God gives us harvest for us and for others. So we have to have the mindset of not keeping for ourselves. I know Malachi 3 is a famous scripture that, you know, Christians, churches, pastors always used to minister when they're talking about tithe and offering. But I would want us to take a look at Malachi 3 verse 10. Amen. Amen. Okay. Malachi 3 verse 10 says, Bring all the tithe, the whole tenth of your income into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and prove me now. My place of emphasis. And prove me now by it, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour you out a blessing that there shall be not enough room to receive. So you see that harvest is always tied to sowing. We commonly say 
you reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the things of God, we don't realize that if you sow in the spirit, you reap in the spirit. You sow in the flesh, you reap in the flesh. So if you sow in the spirit, you will harvest in the spirit. And who is a spirit man? A spirit man is the one who has control. You have control of your atmosphere. So sometimes we are afraid to sow in the spirit because we always feel like what you are doing must be seen. It must be something that you can touch, tangible, you know. But that's not the case. We start from the spirit realm. You sow in the spirit realm, you harvest in the spirit realm, which means because of that power that you know that you have, you are able to pull your things now from the spirit realm into manifestation. <laughs> so you build yourself in the spirit so that you know who you are, you understand the authority, and you begin to speak those things that be not as though they were, and then you begin to see it. Amen. But most often we don't, we, we, we have a mindset like, okay, I know of one lady, she's a very God-fearing woman. She tried to get her son into church and, you know, teaching is very essential. So she taught him that when you sow, you receive. Uh, but she didn't give him a foundation to understand that. So guess what? This boy gave his only $100 and was expecting a return. I never got it for a while. And he's like, everything is fake. Remember what you told me? So he was expecting monetary return. I'm not saying that God will not do that. But without understanding, you just don't even understand the ways of God. Because what do you need money for if God can solve all of your problems? Do you know there are people who don't have money, but they don't have any problems? Or even when they have a situation, somebody else shows up and solves that problem if it needs money. I would rather avail myself to God and let him choose the kind of harvest he's going to let me have. I'm not going to tell God every day, like, my, my, what, my reward from you is money. My reward from you is money. Yes, we need money. I'm not saying we don't. But my reward from God should be solutions. That's the harvest I want. If it's money, fine. If it's me being able to walk through a world where you have sick people and I've harvested the gift of healing and I begin to lay hands and people get healed, I say, praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God gives us harvest. And he says he knows the plans he has for you. You don't know the plans for yourself as God does unless he reveals it to you. Then you'll be walking like a person in a dark room hitting here and there, not knowing exactly. You just know this is a room and there is a door. But if you commit to him, you sow in him, you will get harvest in him according to his will, which says he knows the plans he has for you. Okay, I want you to have money now because this is the trip I want you to take. I want you to have money now because I will cause you to encounter this person who will have a need and money will be the solution. I will, you know, he, you move with him. You move with God. That is the kind of harvest as children of God we need. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So now I will take us into our scripture. First Kings, we'll be dealing with two main scriptures today. First Kings 17, 7, and six, uh, 7 to 16. First Kings. Mama, please bear with me. <laughs> First Kings 17. Are we there? And as we begin to read, please let's be attentive because there are three main points that I'll be talking on. You have obedience, you have sacrifice, and you have, you know, willingness to follow specifications. Those three points, that's what I want us to get out of this scripture. So if we are there, we can read on. After a while, the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came to him, Arise, go to Zarephath, where, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, 
When he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her, bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. As she was going to get it, he called to her and said, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, as the Lord your God lives, I have not a loaf baked, but only a handful of meal in the jar and a little oil in the bottle. See, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and bake it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, fear not, go and do as you have said, but make me a little cake of it first and bring it to me and afterward prepare some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of meal shall not waste away or the bottle of oil fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. So we see obedience in verse 13. Obedience. You realize that Elijah commanded her to go and instead prepare the first bread for him before even thinking about the son and herself who were about to eat the last one and die, which means they were at the last and they knew that was the last and there was just no hope for anything. Somebody that desperate. Honestly, today people will say that's the enemy. He's ungrateful. He's not considerate. Maybe Elijah was even looking better than this lady. Can you imagine a woman struggling with her son? And, you know, she's talking about, see, even the, the quantity she's talking about is so little. She knew that it would not satisfy them, it would not even sustain them. After they ate that, the next thing would be death. But Elijah, even in his promise, that was not something that could be felt with the hands or seen with the eyes. He still asked her to go first and do that and bring some first for him, even though he followed with a blessing from the mouth. But the woman was obedient. She obeyed the word of the prophet and she received the reward of the prophet. The prophet blessed her. So we realize that this widow at Zarephath was obedient. And that's one thing we have to know when it comes to us harvesting, you follow instructions, you sow, you are obedient, you follow the steps. If you are sowing, you have to understand. You cannot, there are, there are some places that are good for, 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 for you, you know, like let's say you are, you are planting rice, you go to a marshy place. You plant it in a dry place, it doesn't do well. There are some things you plant it in a marshy place, it doesn't do well. So you follow the pattern, you follow instructions, you follow what the word says works. And then you have to be obedient. You cannot say this is my last. I know that when it comes to tithing, a lot of times, not out of bad will, people find it difficult. When it comes to sowing seeds, in ministry, in the life of people of God. Look at, this is Elijah, a prophet, and this widow, this poor widow was able, not out of her own volition, but because Elijah said, do so. We don't need to let people, people don't need to wait for, 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 for people of God to ask or beg. And if you know that you are in the right place, then you know that that is good ground for your seed. Would you hold your seed in your hand and not sow it and expect a harvest? How can somebody give me a very fertile ground and I eat my seed? We, we, you, we, for, for us to receive harvest, we need to sow. We need to be obedient. We need to follow instructions. Sometimes we buy seeds from the market, you have the manual written on it. Sunflower, this is how you cultivate it. This is how you cultivate it. And if you follow those instructions, you get a bountiful harvest of sunflowers. Same way, the Bible gives us instructions. Malachi 3.10 tells you, do this and you will have an overflow. God will open the windows of heaven, pour upon you 
a blessing that you will not even be able to contain. But then now, why would you withhold your seed and expect a harvest? This is our month of harvest. I thank God we've gone through the phase of sowing our seeds, and now is the time for us to harvest. So I pray that everybody, through the faith lesson that we had received, has been able to sow their seed, but I'm not saying that it's late. If you did not, God is a God who will give you another chance. As long as you are willing, sow your seed and your harvest is this season. And time is in his hands. Some people will sow, it takes years. Some people will sow, it takes a day. So what I'm encouraging us is to be obedient and you will reap. So all these beautiful words that God has put forth for us to, you know, meditate on. It's not just for us to feel good about it. It's about us applying it and understanding the power of the word. I like referencing 2 Timothy 3, 16. The word of God is his breath. These are not my words. And he gave us his word to teach us, admonish us, build us, strengthen us. That's why he gave us his word. There is no way something without power would do all of that. God's breath, when he created man, the Bible tells us that we were just a form. But then he had to breathe in man to give you life. And then his word is his breath. So to continue to live and to continue to see, you know, things living in your life, be vibrant, be vivacious, you know, to continue being alive in all areas of your life is applying his word in faith. So, and let's reap together this season in Jesus' name. Mm. Let's be obedient. Amen. So the next thing we get from this scripture is in verse 12, which is sacrifice. If you go to verse 12, you will see. It says, and she said, as the Lord your God lives, I have not a low baked, but only a handful of meal in the jar and a little oil in the bottle. See, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and bake it for me and my son that we may eat and die. That is sacrifice that she finally yielded to bring this bread to the man of God. It's sacrifice. It's not about how comfortable you are. It's not about how convenient it is, but it's about sacrificing. We always think we bring the sacrifice of Christ into the house of the Lord. Are you sacrificing? Is it a sacrifice? We have to understand what sacrifice means. It costs you something. So we can't think that we sow out of overflow. No. If it's your seed, it's your seed. If you eat your seed, you will not have bread and you will not have seed, which means you're done. I believe this was this woman's seed because she said after they eat it, they will die, which means life ends once your seed is eaten. If you eat your seed, then you are done. Sow your seed. And she did, but it was sacrificial. And once she did that, she harvested. She never ran out. Endless provision. We should not be afraid. And you know, the Bible tells us that you overcome by the blood of the lamp and they overcame by the blood of the lamp and the word of their testimony. That is our testimony. As a child of God, sometimes you just feel something and then you wish you could transfer it for someone to experience. The honest truth is in life, God caused me to pass through some turbulent paths, deserts. And at first my thought was, I have to do everything possible to harvest, to be able to live. So I was always asking, wanting to get to survive. 
always needing, praying, hoping for harvest. I did not understand that it comes with sacrifice and following God's specifications. The day I received breakthrough was the day I surrendered, and which means I sold my life. I planted my life. I told God, Father, the suffering is too much. But one thing I've heard is that you are a good God and you know the plans you have for me. I'm just human. Maybe what I consider pain and suffering is good from you. So I will just worship you. I never thought I would survive after that, but there was some joy that just filled me. It didn't take long. I'm telling you within a week, thank God mommy Pauline is on this line. I've been sharing my testimonies with her. She knows about visitations that I got. She knows about scriptures that the Lord gave me in dreams. And we would come, I will come in the morning, we share, we break it and it manifests. Within a week. And today I find myself here in America, not because I did much, but thank God for his grace. I acknowledged him. I sold my life and he decided to use me in his own way. If I had my own specifications, I would be praying in Cameroon and saying, Father, give me some good capital for business. Father, do this for me or give me a good job. But the truth is, when I think about my own thoughts and my own plan of getting, it is nowhere compared to the reward that God has rewarded me. Nowhere close. When he says he blesses you more than you can ask or imagine, that mm. is more. When he tells you that when you plant your seed, he will provide for you until there will be that overflow that you will mm. not have room for. It is true. Mm. It's true. And I want to tell you something. Do not be afraid to sow. Do not, I'm telling you because I'm testifying. I'm not just telling you because I'm reading the word of God now and just wanting to be all fancy. No. Do not hesitate to sow. And remember this, there are principles. When you sow, you nurture. Sometimes you look at your crop, it looks like it's not doing good. You get into it, you prone, you add soil under. If the roots are sticking out, you put it in. You make sure you protect. Be intentional when you sow your seed. And expectant because God does not lie. If they told me some years back that I would not cry to pay bills. I would say no. There was a mommy, moment Mommy Pauline visited from Cameroon. Imagine somebody visiting from Cameroon and trying to figure out what they can do to help me and my family. I'm asking you all, imagine. But God did not leave me because from Cameroon, he brought me all the way here, but he was still working. He was still growing that which was for the harvest. And guess what? I know he's not done yet because his word says overflow until you will not have room. I still have room. So the harvest is still flowing. Amen. 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 I want us to trust God and follow specifications because if you see verse 15, it says, she did as Elijah said and she and he and his household ate for many days. She did as Elijah said. She did not do it in her own way. Somebody would go in there, do the bread, look at the sun and say, at the end of the day, this man of God will leave. Other people will still appreciate him as a man of God. People don't know me. Let me push this on the side and take this to him. Or let me hurriedly feed my son as a poor mother. I can cope you know, but let my son at least have some. And I can even explain. Sometimes not even like she's hiding. She can even debate with the man of God, wrestle with him and say, you know what? It's unfair for my son to die. You know, there are scriptures that people use to counter the word of God. Somebody will say, any man who does not provide for his household is an infidel. So how do you think the first thing for me to do is to 
obey this man of God and give him all that I have when my son is dying. People always go into the scripture and then to fight back instructions from God. But I want us to understand, follow specifications. God talks to you. I remember of recent, there was a case in Cameroon. They said this child was going for operation. I think uh, brain operation. They were needing 1.7 million. Okay. So we thank God. God provided some amount at first. And then some few days after God provided something again. And then in my mind, I'm like, Father, you know I took this money from somewhere that I was planning to do something else. Maybe I should fill it back. The Holy Spirit was like, mm-mm. And guess what? It was so hard that the feeling I got was, if I had done that, there would have been a transfer of the situation into my house. Mm. Obedience is good. Specifications, good. Please, let's be patient because we need patience in serving God. That's a fruit of the spirit. So harvest is sure. And as I am saying this, there should not be lack in the house of God which means it's still harvest. And look at the blessed platform that we are on. Nobody should lack. If we are bringing him into this house, it's for us. It's, you remember what I just said, a pipe that provides water never runs dry. So if you hold back, if the pipe says I'm not providing, guess what will happen? You will burst because you will contain and you will explode. And you will, once you burst, you can never be used again. And guess what? You will be dry because you'll be tossed to the side. Let us know that we have to yield from God. We have to harvest from God. We have to be suppliers. Amen. But before, let's understand, God does not cut corners. You sow, you reap. Trust him. I don't know if Mama Mildred planted to take us through the series of faith, but I think even if she did, the Holy Spirit wanted us to have this understanding of faith. Remember, if faith is likened to a mustard seed, it still implies planting and harvesting. Your seed is tiny. Your harvest is very great. A mustard seed is tiny. A mustard tree is great. And that's your faith that has been planted. So, you know, we went through the process. So it shouldn't be hard for us to understand or believe God for what he says. Amen. We have to walk in obedience. We have to be sacrificial. We have to follow specifications for our great harvest. Amen. This is our month. And I pray that we will come back with testimonies because I know we serve a living God whose word is true. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. If he says, try me in Malachi. Can you imagine? That's the challenge. Try me. Try me. When God says, put me in remembrance of my word. Can you imagine what you have to, you have, how, how you have to, you know, make sure you tell yourself, this is God. Do not be afraid to sow. I remember in Cameroon, mommy Pauline, thank you so much. Even in the midst of everything. One day I went to church and she asked me why I didn't come with my daughter. I said I didn't have transport, so I had to walk. And the only money I had was, they call it 50 francs. It's nothing close to, maybe, maybe it's five cents. I don't know. That was what I had in my hand. And I said, you know, while I'm walking, I can get gum and just be chewing or something. So I went to church. And when she asked me, I said, I didn't come with my daughter. She said, ah, why? I said, I didn't have transport. She said, OK, I, how can I tithe her? not have. Do you know that the offering for that Sunday, a portion was given to me? So why do we fear or why are we afraid to sow in the house of God? Why are we afraid to sow in the lives of people? Why are you afraid to sow even in, a li in the life of someone you don't know? If we have to evaluate our lives, you will realize that 
somebody who you did not deserve to bless you have blessed you in a way. Don't only look at it in monetary terms. Sometimes somebody may hold you to even ask you a question on the way. Maybe the person is lost. They're asking you a question and you are responding. By the time you get to the next junction, a fatal accident took place just minutes or seconds ago. God blesses us in his own way that you cannot pay a price for it. So even in the lives of strangers, don't be afraid because when you sow as unto the Lord, God causes the harvest in your life. Sometimes people are afraid to sow in the lives of strangers because they'll be like, when will this person reward me or where would this person ever meet me again to, you know, it's not man who causes the harvest. Mm -mm. It's God. It's God. And I am grateful. Had it been I was born in a family where they describe such as people with golden spoons, I might not really have a testimony. Maybe. And sometimes I wonder, I'm like, God, would I have still been able to trust you? Growing up, just knowing that my father could do this for me, my life was planned. And, you know, after this stage, I had to go this way or that. Sometimes I ask those questions because now when I sit and I look back, I realize that even my time of barrenness, as I would say, my wilderness period, my loadable time in my life, you know, God was there. And he knew what he was doing. He was building something in me. And that's why today I can really, when I, when I talk on giving and harvest, I'm passionate because it is an experience. My harvest is just so much. I don't even, I, I don't know if, you know, the seed, I don't think, in short, if I had a seed, it was as small as a mustard seed. But my harvest is not one mustard tree. It's mustard trees. And so I would always encourage people, do not be afraid if you trust God. Do not be afraid if you trust God. And there should not be, there should be no hunger in the house of God. The people of God need to focus on the word. The way we are being fed on this line. And I don't want us to have that mindset to feel that somebody has. If the Holy Spirit lays it in your heart to bless somebody, don't think they have. Be obedient. I'm saying this because I know that it is common. Sometimes we look around and then you look at, the people of God are always looking good. But it doesn't mean they don't have needs too. And maybe you are the one that God is saying, fill in for this. Just fertile ground. Can you imagine sowing in the life of a person who waits on the Lord? They look at what the, the seed is always in front of them as they present you to the Father. They help you nurture your seed. They grow your seed for your harvest. I'm encouraging us not to limit ourselves. It's like you discover a good business. You will look for capital that you have and then you hear that if you invest this amount, this is the yield you will get. Sometimes you go about looking for, 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 for capital to add to what you have, to be able to invest in this business because you know that the reward is great. You trust the business. God is not like an earthly business. His word is there. He has promised you. Try him. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not here to convince, but I'm here to tell you that I have seen the Lord's goodness. I have seen the Lord's goodness. And I'm encouraging you in the same way that the world is calling us. And we come here and we begin to enjoy the fruit of the spirit. We begin to grow. We are uniting. We realize that there is a place where people care for one another. Sowing is good news. And I'm encouraging us because if this is not taught and then we are withholding something precious from you and you know what? We are causing you 
to be limited in your harvest. Let there be an overflow in this house. Let there be bountiful harvest in this house. Amen. Amen. So you will not have it. Mm. So I want us to have that understanding and know that our God has said it and he specifies in his house. But again, I stretch it out. When God talks about his house, let's realize that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. No one needs to suffer while you are having fun, enjoying yourself, spending excesses, and you have a neighbor who is suffering, or you hear of somebody that you've never met, and then you, but you can help and you choose not to. Pray and sow the seed. Amen. The Holy Spirit says this is not ground for you, because he would say that sometimes. And I'm telling you this, the Holy Spirit will restrain you from sowing sometimes in some places because it's not every soil that is good soil. But I bet you the well is the best place to sow. Amen. 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 Our harvest is here. Harvest. Amen. I think Amen. I can move to. I was going to talk about Elisha and the Shunammite woman, 2 Kings 4 8. I don't know how much time we have. That's okay. You can continue. Okay. Second Kings chapter four. I'm reading from verse eight. This one is a long one. Amen. Mm. One day, Elisha went on to Shunem where a rich and influential woman lived, who insisted on his eating a meal afterward. Whenever he passed by, the, by, he stopped there for a meal. And she said to her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God who passes by continually. Let us make a small chamber on the house top and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp. Then whenever he comes to us, he can go up the outside stairs and rest there. One day he came and turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, call this Shunammite. When he had called her, she stood before him. And he said to Gehazi, say now to her, you have been most painstakingly and reverently concerned for us. I want us to take note of <laughs> the word, you know, is intense describing the kind of care that this woman took of the man of God. Mm. Have been most, not just painstakingly, you have been most painstakingly and reverently concerned for us. And I want to ask us in the house, I have enjoyed this platform. I have enjoyed the people. I thank God every day for them. So I have to ask myself, have I been most painstakingly and reverently concerned by these people who have sacrificially devoted themselves for the word, taking care of God's sheep? Jesus says, if you love me, feed my sheep. And then some people say, this is my assignment. And they take it upon themselves. They feed the sheep. As the sheep is growing, the sheep brings a younger one. They feed it. They follow up. They do. God, their lives. Most painstakingly. Ha. Huh. And reverently concerned for the man of God. And it moved the man of God. That's what I was just encouraging us earlier. When you sow your seed... The people of the people who have a heart for God and His assigned, you are forever led up to the Father. They cultivate that seed for you. They help you make sure your harvest is bountiful. They encourage you, like, okay, this is the season to go and weed. This is the season, you know, when you see the roots out, you add soil. You know, you water during the evening, you don't water in the morning. They tell you, because you may not be a farmer, you hold a seed in your hand and you come and they are the soil. And then, but then they are still there to even tell you how to perform, to make sure that you get that bountiful harvest. They caution you, they mold you, 
They teach you, they give you instructions. They help your fruit to, to, to do well. So, you know, Eli, Eli, Elisha, he could tell the, the, you know, the, 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 the sacrifice this woman was making to make sure that he could minister. It wasn't about the woman. Who, this mm. woman made sure that each time he passed, he gets a meal. Mm. So maybe he was even going to minister other places. But this woman decided to take care of him. This woman decided that he should <laughs> lack mm. nothing. Mm. So we continue. What is to be done for you? That's Elisha's question to, question to the woman. Would you like to be spoken for to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. They are sufficient. Humility. She was giving humbly. She was serving the man of God humbly. She was sowing her seed humbly. She was sowing her seed and just trusting God that it's all about God and God cares and it's not about my thoughts, my intentions, my needs, but the harvest, God is in charge and God does not let your seed rotten because you don't think of it. He does not let your seed die. The obedience of sowing is enough. The sacrifice of sowing is enough. God takes care of the rest. You know, even when we sow our seeds and we go every day inspecting and doing everything, you know, we are not the ones who actually cause it to grow. Sometimes you sow and then people will be giving you prediction like when you sow every after two weeks, it shoots. And then there are seasons when you sow that same seed, two weeks, it has not shot. Some seasons before two weeks, it shoots. God causes the harvest. This woman, she sowed sacrificially, not thinking. That's the attitude we need to have as sowers. But one thing I want to guarantee you is that God takes note and he doesn't let your seed die in the ground. He does not. Because even when this woman gave this excuse, like that is sufficient, they said later, Elisha said, what then is it? to be done for her. Because even without the woman there, now he was still contemplating. It was in the mind of the man of God. He had no rest because she must harvest. Even if she doesn't think she has to. Some of these things are just natural in life. And I thank God because that is one of my thing that is so fresh in my mind. Not only in physical substance, your spiritual actions, your heart, the state of your heart, what you contemplate on is the, is the seed. Yeah. And that is what attracts what you become. If you contemplate evil, you are sowing seeds of evil. And you will reap evil. So if God says, if you sow the kind of seed that God is talking about, and you have an overflow, can you imagine sowing evil, the overflow of evil that comes back? And sometimes you, we wrestle with things, but I thank God because you just have to get to a place where you say, but at the end of the day, what will it profit you to gain the world and lose your soul? What will it profit you to sow in the flesh and reap in the flesh? Meanwhile, we are infinite beings. We don't, we don't end here. You can, but the flesh, it could be one day, it could be two, it could be 10, a hundred years, but it has an end. Why would you sow into something that limits when you have the opportunity to sow? Where the reaping will continue until God says, if you sow in heavenly things, you are sowing to reap incorruptible. You are sowing in a place where your things cannot be corrupted. You are putting your, your seat. You are putting your seat where no corruption, nothing can corrupt. It cannot rust, nothing, nothing, nothing. Why would you prefer to esteem things that 
are perishable. So in, in the flesh. So this woman, she made sure she did the right thing. Sacrificially, pure heart, just serving the man of God, appreciating what the man of God is doing, even as he's going around and doing the good to the community and even to the ends of the world, this woman decided to give him place to rest, not because she wanted anything from him in return. So, but because of that, Elisha had no rest because he's like, she needs to receive her harvest. So they said later on, Elisha thought about this and he was asking his servant, what then is it to be done for her? Gazi answered, she has no child and her husband is old. He said, call her. Gazi called her and she stood in the doorway. Elisha said, at this season, when the time, at this season, at this season, at this season, when the time comes round, at this season, when the time comes round, at this season, when the time comes round, we have to understand the seasons. As yes. you oh. At this season, when the time comes round, you shall yeah. embrace the son. She said, no, my Lord, you man of God, do not lie to me. Yeah, to your handmaid. You know, there are things we see impossible. Like the yield cannot be this. It is impossible. It is impossible with man. The husband was old. For that to be written there, it means it's something to take note of. The husband was old. There was no way under normal circumstances this woman could bear a child anymore. But she had been sowing her seed and God chose to cause an overflow in an area in her life where she had given up. Sometimes you say, I'll just settle for this because it's impossible. This dream is dead. Out of season, no way, no means, no support, no direction. I push it to the side. It's dead. And that's why when people ask you, just say, you know what? I'm just happy. But if you dig, there is a thing. You're wishing breakthrough in that area. And you've pushed it to the side because impossibility. But I want to tell you today, your seeds that you are sowing are not in vain. And God is a God of miracle. God is not man. He likes his glory. So he shows up in those areas that man cannot touch. Man cannot fix. The dreams that are dead, he shakes it and causes it to rise again when you had given up. But focused on him. That's one thing. There's a difference between giving up and surrendering to the Lord. Right? So you realize that the man of God decided to deal with the issue in her life that she had given up and said, Father, this is the one I'm presenting to you. Said, see how she has your phone is muted what happened oh i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> I apologize. Okay. I don't know how I hit mute. Yeah, so, so Elisha, the prophet, carried the woman's, you know, need to the father. And he was the one in that place of intercession. Because this woman said, eh, eh, don't lie to me. She had given up. She didn't want to even deal with it because she, didn't, she thought it was false hope. And you know, in the physical, they'll talk of false hope, but there is nothing like false hope with God as long as it is in his will. 
So Elisha took this and finally in that season, when the time had come around, she bore a child. She carried a son. And so we see that God is a God who keeps his word. God is a God who rewards your seed. God is a God who causes your harvest. God is a God who has promised that you should try him and see if you will not reap bountifully, have an overflow. I just want us to apply. Let it not be that we have wasted our faith. And as I am talking, you know, we are not limiting seed to material things. There are a lot of need in life which are not material. Sometimes you hear of a story of somebody <clears throat> who was about to commit suicide and somebody just ministered to them or somebody just spoke to them and, you know, they stopped and they did not go further with their plan. And at the end of the day, this same person who was trying to commit suicide becomes a very big evangelist, winning souls for Christ or becomes a great um, a business person, sponsoring missions and all of that. You sowed a seed. And also I'm telling you, we have to make sure that we remember that it's in obedience. If God says speak, you speak. If he says money, you money. If he says food, you food. You just sow according to what the Holy Spirit is giving you. Stay in the spirit. Abide mm. in him. Receive instructions from him. So you see now that Elisha and a, a, a man of God, you know, he, he, he knew exactly that. Even though this woman said she didn't need anything from him or even the, the issue of having a son was something that was long forgotten and was impossible until she said, don't lie to me. Elijah knew that the God he serves is a God who answers prayers. The God who he serves is a rewarder. The God he serves is a God who causes you to harvest. Harvest. So we have to understand and begin to sow. Because if you don't sow, when others are reaping, you cannot complain. A lot of people have not sown, but they are complaining. A lot of people expect so much from God, and yet if you ask them, you realize that they are the same people who even fight God. People will fight God, but expect goodness from him. He is a good God, but your path matters. He provides. He causes abundance to overflow in your terrain. But if you are not positioned, so you will be standing out there and expecting what is growing in this yard. There is just no way you can be out there harvesting from here. You have to be here to harvest from here. So let's make sure that we cultivate the habit of, you know, taking care of God's people, sowing into their lives, sowing into God's, when I say God's people, I'm not limiting it to preachers, please. We are all God's people. Jesus said, if you love me, feed my sheep. He did not specify to Peter that it will only be the people of, uh, uh, within the church, you know, I'm talking within the church in the sense of, you know, building, mm -hmm. like some people will take care of their church members, church members, forgetting that every believer is a church. And remember, even those who have not believed, it is our assignment to reach out to them. And sometimes the way you will minister is by sowing a seed in their lives. That's true. So you do not leave anyone out. Make sure you go with the instructions of the Holy Spirit. Maybe, who knows, whether God had planned the way of this Shunammite woman that I want to prove myself through her in this way, mm -hmm. that as she takes care of the man of God, I will prove that the thing that man cannot do for you, I will do it as a reward. And that is why it is written today. And we have it to tell ourselves, to remind ourselves that just serve God, do the things he instructs you to do. And he will get into those things, the area of your life where the dreams have failed and no man could help you with. And God gets in there and begin to push it up. Amen. So I just want us to, you know, they say 
where his spirit is, there is liberty. Let's feel free in the house of God and remember that we are one. And you sowing in the kingdom of God is helping yourself. Because the truth is, honestly speaking, I've reaped. I've reaped from good-hearted people. Sometimes God will even cause some people who will bless me and regret why they did it. Why? <laughs> why stupid? Amen. I don't know how I did it. Did I do yeah. that? Yeah. And that's why sometimes some, some, so I will see some blessings and I'll call to make sure that the person knew what they were doing. Because I've gone through a situation where somebody really did a big move in my life and, and later on was like, I don't know what caused me to do that. So I just want to encourage us to continue trusting God. Amen. Amen. So the Bible tells us that we should not get weary in doing good. That's in Galatians 6, 9 to 10. In due season, God rewards. Never you say, I've been sowing. I've been sowing. No. Trust God. It will cause the harvest to come. And another thing as children of God, we all know on this platform, the great commission is paramount. So let's remember, I want us to look at Matthew 936. Matthew 936. Because we are when we talk about harvest, most often we think about you know our needs being met and all of that, but we forget about God's needs. God wants the harvest too. So that's Matthew chapter 9. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Matthew chapter 9, 36. And see. Okay. When he saw the throngs, he was moved with pity and sympathy for them because they were bewildered, harassed, and distressed, and dejected, and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is indeed plentiful, but the laborers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest to force out and thrust laborers into his harvest. You know, throngs is like a densely crowded people, like, you know, so when Jesus saw this, they said he, 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 he had compassion. And why? Because the way he saw the people, they were bewildered. They, they, they looked harassed, distressed, dejected, and helpless. That is the harvest that is out there. So with this kind of dis description, think about the people you pass every day. That's God's harvest. The people you pass every day, lost, all of that. That is God's harvest. We are praying for harvest. This is the season of harvest. We will harvest in every area. Every spiritual area, I'm talking about God's harvest. As we are harvesting financially, harvesting in our health, harvesting, let's remember that there is a harvest of the Lord, which are souls. So let's be conscious as we go around, knowing that there is a harvest for souls. God says they are plentiful. They are indeed plentiful, but the laborers are few. And so this should be our prayer, that we should pray that the Lord of harvest will force out and thrust laborers into his harvest. Because it looks like that area is an area where people don't really pay attention to harvest. We want to harvest, yes. God has harvest for us in every area of our lives. And so we are harvesting financially, we are harvesting health-wise, we are harvesting in the manifestation of you know, a, a, a success in our marriages, businesses, and everything. And let's remember that there is a harvest of the Lord out there, which are souls. And so we are praying that even for those, when we have harvested in all these other areas and we eat and we are so full, and sometimes we look at the harvest out there, God's harvest, and we feel like we don't have the strength to go out there, or we don't have the means, or we don't have what it takes to harvest souls. God will force us. Let's pray that this season will be a season where God will thrust laborers out there to harvest for him in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Remember, uh, Genesis chapter 15, Amen. verse 1, you know, after Abraham had come back from war, you know, and he met with uh, the king of Salem, and he gave him back everything that had been, you know, had been taken from them. 
So he went and he captured and he brought it back to the king. The king wanted to bless him. The king wanted to reward him. After, because that was a seed that they said he gave 10%, which was like tithe, the tithe that we, 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 we are talking about today. So the king thought he would reward him for doing all that he did, but he was doing it as unto the Lord. And guess what? He told the king that, no, I'm not taking anything from you because I don't want it tomorrow to be said that this man made me great. The Lord will never share his glory with anyone. So when you are sowing and you are expecting reward from that human being, then that human being may never know God. And you are the one who has stood in the place. You have stood in the middle. You have directed, you know, you know what I mean? You have stood in the middle because instead of that person expect, instead of you expecting your word from God, you are expecting from that human being, which means you have placed him in the place of God or so, like your blessing coming from him. No, our blessing comes from the Lord and we will not give his glory to anyone else. Sow the seed and let God cause the harvest. And guess what? After Abraham told the king that he would not take anything from him in return, guess what happened to Abraham? He had a vision and God spoke to him. God said, for fear not, Abraham, I am your shield. Your abundant compensation and your reward shall be exceedingly great. So I looked up these words, abundant, which means existing or available in large quantities, plentiful, compensation, the action or process of awarding someone money as a recompense for loss, injury, or suffering. So when you sow your seed, you are losing something. Because most often, sometimes, some people are so hungry that their seed is the last thing they have, and they feel like, you know what, they are desperate. They may not put it in the ground. They may not sow it because they want to keep it. So they go through suffering. They go through pain. They, they, lo they lose something by sowing seed. But remember, God says he will compensate us. And that's, that's the vision he gave Abraham, who decided not to take anything back from Melchizedek. God compensated him abundantly, which means existing or available in large quantities, plentiful. And he says he is our shield, which means he's not only rewarding you, you're not only harvesting material things, but now he stands and surrounds you with protection because of your seed and because your expectation is not from man as you sow. He says he is your shield. So the noun of shield is a man or thing providing protection. So God provides your protection. His name is a strong tower. As you sow your seed, it means you are hidden in that name. That strong tower, nothing can penetrate. So your harvest is that God surrounds you. His name becomes the place where you hide. Nothing can penetrate the name of God. So by so, you see what, what you get in return? God becomes your shield. He becomes your abundant compensation and your reward shall be exceedingly great. We, and then the verb for shield says to protect someone or something from a danger, risk, or unpleasant experience. Danger, risk, unpleasant experience, which means danger is an existing issue. Risk is an issue that might happen. Danger that might happen. And then unpleasant experience. It could be in any area of your life. He shields you. Any area of your life, God shields you. And then exceedingly is extremely, exceptionally. So exceptionally now is to a great degree than normal. And it's unusual. So when you sow your seed, your reward, your harvest is unusual. Amen. That is why Isis sacrificially sowed during farming in obedience. Amen. Amen. And you saw his reward. It was unusual. We are not doing all of God is not giving us this word just to learn about other people's stories and talk about. It's about transforming our own experience. Yes. Changing. But until you apply it, it will not take effect. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. So where am I taking Amen. us? To? Sowing is you have to do it sacrificially and your service whether it be your service whether what what, what what through service through material needs through you give we as believers i thank god for one thing that mama mildred keeps emphasizing on we our souls are continuously being worn so in this area of sowing if there is any soul that is still wondering when it comes to sowing. I pray that as we apply faith and the sowing, principle of sowing, 
we expect the harvest through faith. Mm. So that is where we are today. Mm. So for those who have had a problem sowing, I think the Holy Spirit has guaranteed us. We will not say we did not hear. We will, because this is not a platform where you just sit and they just talk and then maybe you fall asleep. This is a platform where there is follow up. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will, you know, minister to each and every one of us according to our understanding and, you know, take us, build us and, you know, bring us to that place where we are established. Mm. Because if creation is eagerly waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, I believe this is a platform where those sons of God are and we need to manifest. And without harvest, how do you manifest? So I pray that the word we've received today, you know, will Amen. Be laminated <laughs> in our hearts so that nothing will take it out in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Wow. Amen. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for that word. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, my brother. We bless God and to him alone be all the glory. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you very, very much for this. I mean, it's very, very clear. I don't know. The message of giving and sowing seed, I believe each and every one of this platform has really understood. Yeah, because if you haven't up to now, then you probably need special deliverance from that. Thank you for that. Um, I'll now open the floor to comment, feedbacks, please. Yeah, as Mr. Yes. was sharing, the Lord was just putting some things in my spirit, taking me back to, you know, very, very far personally. And the statement that in that season, when the time had come around, kept ringing in my spirit. And the Lord is impressing on my heart that this is the season when time has come around, mm -hmm. whatever you have been sowing, whatever you have been sowing, this is your time for harvest. Mm -hmm. This is harvest time. Amen. And the word has come to announce harvest. Yes. Maybe you have been sowing in tears. Maybe you've been sowing in the lives of people of God and wondering, sowing with diligence, sowing with everything in you. This is your time to harvest. Maybe you've been sowing uh, financially. This is your harvest time. Uh, some have been sowing into their families, investing in their families financially, carrying the weight all by themselves. This is your time to harvest. Some have been sowing in, 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 in souls, in their prayers, investing night and day. And this is your time to harvest. Amen. I'm telling you, when she was saying it, I was getting it from another place. Mm. Uh, the, 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 this, this time has really gone around and I feel like it it, it 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 is like full circle for us on this platform personally i see harvest in the area that god has called me to sow i have been sowing in the lives of leaders the lord called me to invest in leaders and bring them to work together corporately from time wherever i go every nation, every country, I always find myself in leaders, sowing, nurturing, and listening to Isabel. She is the first leader that was sent from Cameroon. She had an opportunity to work with the human rights and at the same time to go to America as a missionary. 
we prayed her into Captain America, hell was let loose. The first sentence she made was like, when they see this right, I don't know, she put it so well. I think it, when they see this right for harvest, Isabel is the first seed that is ripe for harvest. Mm -hmm. Because to see her on this platform, to me, I see it very differently. It's like we've gone round. I remember when I, each time I come to America, I'm like, Lord, what part of America did you send this, my daughter to? It was like the whole of hell was let loose on her. And uh, she told me, mommy, at the point she wasn't even going to church. She said, mommy, I'm looking for better. There is no better here because the church in Cameroon was called better. But for her to be on this platform, comfortably expressing herself, I feel we found better, which is a house of God. Amen. We've Amen. Gone, Amen. We've, we've gone full circle. And so every seed that you have been sowing, get ready for the harvest. But when the harvest comes, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18 says, remember, Amen. remember the Lord. For it is him that has given you power to make wealth. Amen. Islam is taking the world using their finances. They are investing. They are sowing bountifully. God is raising a generation of Christians who will overtake. Remember, the, the people were running on their horses and their chariots. But Elijah came on foot and ran and overtook God is releasing an overtaking anointing on this platform and accelerating anointing financially. Amen. When we were in that church in Cameroon. There was a financial situation that was horrible. That's the church we inherited. A pastor, a man of God, stood there and collected $60,000 from people and escaped. A foreigner. And that is when I was pastor of that church. I was surrounded by many people of influence. The prime minister's son was the elder. The provincial chief of transport was one of them. My husband, who is a financial giant in Cameroon, was in the church. But let me tell you, the financier was Isabel. She was the one sewing in the church. All these mighty people were there. But the one who was investing financially out of nothing was Isabel. And I see that this is her harvest time. And so when she's announcing harvest, I see that the seed she sowed in Bethel, she's harvesting it now. Amen. Placed her on a platform to announce the harvest, not by words, but by a testimony of her very life. And I know that an anointing is resting on this platform and we will take the world by storm. Where Islam stops, that's where we begin. Yes. Because the anointing to accelerate is upon us on this platform. And Amen. I thank you for listening to this. Glory. Amen. 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 Um, please, can I say something, please? Oh. Um, I, I have, um, I wanted to contribute by reading um, Deuteronomy 8, because that's the word that the Lord gave to me yesterday. Um, and it, um, it was amazing when Pastor Pauline mentioned Deuteronomy 8, verse 18, but I'll just read. It says, be careful to follow every command I am giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter, the, and, may enter and possess the land the Lord promised on the oath of your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness for these 40 years, like we just heard um, Pastor mention about um, us receiving everything we had, meant, we had prayed for uh, uh, for 40 years in America and all of that. He says, remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness for these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether you or not will keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger I remember when the preacher mentioned hunger and he said he's, he called, humbled you, causing you to hum, hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, 
but on every word that comes out of the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out and your feet did not swell during these 40 years. Okay. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord God disciplines you. Observe the commands of the Lord your God. Walk in obedience to him and, and, revering, him, and revering him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks and streams and deep springs gushing out of the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pornament grains, ol olive oil and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing, a land where the rock and iron, the, the, a land where the rocks and the iron and you can dig copper out of the hills when mm -hmm. you have eaten and you are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands and keeping his laws and his decrees. I'm giving you today, well, oh, I'm sorry, failing to observe his commands, his laws and his decrees that I'm giving you today. Otherwise, when you eat and you are satisfied, you build fine houses and settle down and when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and, and waterless land with venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you out of the, he, he brought out water out of the hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known to humble and test you that in the end it might go well with you. You say, you may say to yourself, my power and my, it is by my power and by my strength that I have produced this world for me. But remember the Lord, your God, for Amen. it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirm and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship or bow down to them, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed like the nations that the Lord destroyed before you. So you will, so you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord your God. Amen. 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 Thank you very much for sharing that. Thank you very much. God bless you. Um, Ralph, do we have anybody else who want to say something? I personally enjoy that word tremendously. I, th I thought that the word on, on reaping was awesome. And it's time for harvest, so I'm just ready. I'm positioning myself so that that time can come. This is the season and it is now. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Shari, for sharing that. Amen. Please, I have something to say in support of what uh, Mommy Pauline just said. Okay, Mama. Mm -hmm. Concerning Isabel, <coughs> I'm sure she is really a chosen one. Mm. I praise God for her. Amen. Because even back home, if the rest of my children will have water to drink, have a place to make them happy, it is Isabel. It is because of Isabel, because mm. of what God is doing through her. Amen. I am just too happy. Even in the house here, she always is like her ears, always listen to hear me say, where, where are you now and how are you doing? She will just come by and say, Mama, what is it and who is that? Who are you talking to? When I say this, she does not even know all of the people or oh, some of the people I say where about their situations back home now. But she will just say, Mama, give me the phone. She will take the phone and ask the situation and ask how it is going and what. And the next thing she will just say, send your Cash up. number. Send, mm. send it to me and how your names are. 
I am going to send you something right away for Amen. that week or for you to continue with. Just this last week, I cannot count how much. Seven seven thousand five hundred uh, francs have gone. And the other day, she 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 the other one one mama she just stood as if she wants to shoulder everything. The mama is now in the hospital, uh, uh, southwest there. She could not, she cannot even talk. You don't need to, you don't need to. You don't need to respond to people. Just because leave mama alone. She is still there. Still there. Isabel is still there on the phone all the time, calling yesterday. She called and she sent. So I think God is using her wonderfully. I am just happy mm -hmm. that she is preaching just what she is doing. Amen. What she does. Amen. Yes. May God, our living God, grace Amen. in her life. Mm. I pray that God will continue to bless her and that even all of you, all of us who sit down to listen to this, and that even me myself in my own little way, God should touch my heart to do something and the way that he will take the glory. Amen. 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 Multiply her kind. Amen. 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 I, I don't know. <laughs> to me, I don't know. Okay. Sorry about you. What I, want to do. Mm -hmm. I am, I am, um, it's part of the harvest. Because Amen. I feel joy, I feel fulfilled. If I don't do it, I don't feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. It's a blessing. And I cannot do it if, I, if God did not make it. Mm -hmm. Because um, when there is no way and, and your fulfillment comes from things like that, then you realize that you, you, are, not, you are in a dry place. Mm -hmm. But just like I said again, that if you are a I work for the master as a, I work for the master and thank God in the course of my work the Lord fresh, refreshes me a lot Amen. in every way and that's why I'm just calling on everyone to experience this it's so much joy you know sometimes you may be holding back because you, you have not tried it. The, the enemy will stop you from trying it. The enemy will stop you from doing it because the enemy wants you to miss out. He comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. So he will tell you, keep your seat. But you know, even the Bible says, unless that seat falls on the ground and dies, then you know that it's worthless. It will not multiply. It will not cause any harvest. So, but the devil will tell you it's better to hold it and watch it with your eyes. In your hand, a seed has it, there was, it has the potential, but unless it gets in the ground, the potential will not produce anything. So potential on its own does not produce. Mm -hmm. So, but to take that seed with the potential and sow it is what causes the harvest. And I will tell you the truth. God has been faithful because he gives me joy. I, I, he, he really, he, he blesses me. It's good to hear people heave sighs of relief. It's good to watch people happy and transformed. It's good, it, it feels good. And I'm asking everybody, our fight is not to be the best because the word of God is for everyone. It's not when he says you will be the head, it doesn't mean other people have to be the tail. No, children of God are the head period. So if you are the head and you're surrounded by tails as children of God, then you are not the head. So it's a collective action. And, and I bless God because he gives my heart with joy. So that's what I wanted to say. So I don't think I'm not losing, I'm not losing, I'm benefiting a lot.
benefiting the law. In the name of glory, it's such a gracious opportunity that man, man cannot give me that kind of satisfaction. So I bless God and to him alone be the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much. Glory again. Of the Lord. Thank you so much again, Pastor Isabel. Um, we are really blessed with the message of today and we just trust God that we will all actually get the harvest or receive our harvest in various areas of our life of which we've been sowing our seeds on. Again, if you haven't sowed your seed, like we heard, it's not late, let's continue. Even though it's harvest time, it doesn't mean that you still cannot sow your seed. Thank you again, love, it's 118. I'm not sure if we have anybody who want to comment or not, but if you have any comments, please, let's leave it for next week. Um, I would love to invite, again, just ask Pastor Isabel to please close us out with a word of prayer, then we can share the grace. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you. We are grateful for this breath of life. We are grateful for this daily dose. Father, we thank you for satisfying us with your living word. We continue to pray over our hearts, Lord, that as we have heard your word today, we will not harden our hearts but that we will trust you and obediently do that which you have called us to do. Amen. We thank you for the understanding you're giving us. We thank you for the, the, the skills that are falling off our eyes. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the veils that are lifted. We thank you, O oh Father, because today we can see deep in the spirit. We thank you because we can hear soundly in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you sounds that are coming from heaven, the sounds of harvest in the mighty name of God. We thank you for the windows that are opened and the abundance that is flowing in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord God Almighty, we pray and we continue to thank you for the overwhelming overflow. We just bless you, O oh God, and even as your word says, we should lengthen our tents and strengthen our pecs. We pray for wisdom to be able to do that, that the blessing will not knock us down. But Lord God Almighty, we continue to pray that as you bless us, O oh Father, we shall not be filled in ourselves and forget your work. Lord, but we pray that we will be obedient to keep that which you have given us hide it in our hearts and pass it even to the next generation. Father, we continue to thank you for this platform, oh God, because it's a place where you transform us and it is a spiral action that continues to transform in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, for good experience. We thank you for your ever present presence in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, we just thank you for your patience with us and your directions all the time. We thank you for empowering us. We thank you for speaking through us and in us and with us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We just continue to adore you and we just continue to appreciate that which you did for us and we commit ourselves today again, oh Father, that we will look intently at that cross in remembrance <clears throat> did for us in the name of Jesus, that attentively, oh God, we will draw our hearts and remember all that you did for us in the name of Jesus. And Lord God Almighty, that we will not limit our time in remembrance of you only to when we break bread in Jesus' name, oh God, but at every second of our lives, we shall continue to discern the body and the blood and remember yeah. the power that you have restored to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord God Almighty, I just want to thank you because you have brought us to the place of understanding who we are in you and i thank you oh lord that your word that has come through today oh father we know that it shall not return void but yes, we lord. pray oh god with lifted hands ready to receive abundance and instructions on what to do with the abundance in jesus name we have prayed this morning father we thank you for each and every one of us who was on this prayer line oh god and father we know that you are all able so even those who are not here you will minister by your spirit to them and they will not miss out on anything to you alone be all the glory lord in jesus name we have prayed amen amen, amen.
Amen. We share the grace, Amen. the grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, love the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and abide with us forever and forever. And surely the next of mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 Have a blessed Sunday and a blessed week ahead, family. Thank you so much. Yeah.